window that uh, Mordecai opens to her, and Esther moving from fear to faith. Now, first of all, the first part of Esther being transformed. Esther, because she's part of a subject people, as we know, is hemmed in by these cultural constraints. I'm doing a book now on the poor and what it means to empower them. And one of the very basic images in, in the mindset of the poor is the image of what a scholar has called the image of limited good. The world is scarce. And the world has all these limits. When you say so to somebody, why don't you do this? I and Esther was like this. She was she grew up in a culture of constraint, maybe because of years and years of captivity in the Middle Persian Empire. And she was also just raised by her uncle, no, Mordecai. And in chapter four, we find that when Mordecai goes to her and says, Entreat the king for the sake of your people. She says, it's very interesting what she said. She spoke to Hathan, who was uh, one of her eunuchs, and said, all the king's servants, all the people of the king's provinces, know that if any man or woman goes to the king inside the inner court without being called, there is but one law to be put to death, except the one to whom the king holds out the scepter. It's very interesting for me because she's the queen. And then she says, you know, all the king's servants. She classes herself among the servants. And then she says this. And all, she says, the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces. In other words, all the colonized peoples of the empire. The Isidnia identifies not so much the fact that she's queen, but the fact that, well, she belongs to a subject people. And she's on the same level as the king's servants. She's a guy named Melda Marcos, conjugal and dictatorship. I have as much right to rule, you know? But you know, she's... You could see how she identifies herself. And one of these subject people, even if she's queen. And true enough, maybe because uh, the king is subject to his own this arbitrary caprice. You know? Just because the Pahiyasha was uh, Queen Vashti was replaced. So it's possible that she thinks, you know, that can happen to me as well. So her deep identification is not because she's queen, but simply that, you know, this is the law for everyone. Now, the interesting thing also is that she says here, that uh, I have not been summoned to the king's bed for 30 days. Now, I'm a single woman. I don't know what it's like <laughs> to be summoned, you know, by my husband for a whole month, no? No sex. <laughs> Maybe you can tell me later what that means. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's possible that she was not sure how desirable she was. After all, the king had all these concubines, no? So she was not even sure about her own desirability. And so she says, I cannot go into the king, you know. I have not been so much. Now, so she, she, you know, she's like most Filipinos, no? We tell them, you know, we can do this. And I, marami, di niya di kaya this is more nation, you know, in other and kind of Now, it is very interesting 
But uh, Esther certainly has been uh, conditioned into this kind of mindset, huh? a subject, um, like our centuries of colonization, that there is no sense of what is possible. Huh? All you see are constraints. You know, it's a recession, you know, but we cannot do this, you know, we have no money, there's no budget, we have no jobs and so on. And Philippines especially feels this. She feels, and, and of course, because she herself is restricted even in her movement. She has to, she has to uh, ask the eunuchs for information to the outside world. She's isolated. And she knows how inflexible the Middle Persian laws are. In fact, it cannot be revoked, not even by the king. That's why later the king has to issue another edict. Because he cannot revoke what he has done once it is sealed. The royal machinery, you know, you have this feeling of inexorability. And so, I mean, you can understand why she feels hemmed in, you know, in this cultural constraint. Now, what was Mordecai's answer? Now, this has always been very, very encouraging for me. And we see Esther suddenly having a larger vision, a larger sense of her significance by what Mordecai says. Who knows? Well, before that, do not think that just because you are in the king's court that you shall escape. Mordecai says, if you keep silent at this time, do not think that you will escape any more than all the other Jews. And anyway, he says, Relief and deliverance will come from another place. One of the things I like about Mordecai is he has this very deep sense of the sovereignty of God. We are in a reform college, no? Calvin College. Sovereignty is big here. And I think we keep saying this theologically, but we don't really know what it means in our everyday life. When we are under threat, under pressure, when we lose our jobs and we don't know where the next meal is coming from, can we actually say, 